In the vast darkness of our galaxy, filled with frozen spheres, silent dust, and endless cold, one world defies the pattern with quiet flame. K218b, a planet orbiting a red sun in the Leo sky, rests over 110 light years from Earth but offers a window like no other. For years, through telescopes aimed at space, astronomers noticed flickers and signals suggesting something unusual. First it was water vapor in its clouds, then came carbon-based clues drifting across the stellar atmosphere. But the James Webb Space Telescope, with its unmatched vision, now sees what chemistry alone cannot explain in the black cosmos. Life's signatures, not just strange gases, now appear written in the planet's air like whispers from the ocean. These are molecules produced only by life, a pattern unmistakable and impossible to deny under the alien sky. This is no longer guesswork, not just theory in the lab, this is data, solid as any mountain or crater. And with it, the scientific world has begun to shake beneath the weight of real possibility. K218b is what scientists call a Hyan world, part ocean planet, part hydrogen world floating in deep orbit. It's 2.6 times Earth's radius, with a mass around 8.6 times greater, anchored in the Leo starscape. What makes it truly remarkable is its placement, right inside the habitable zone of its red star. There, light and warmth balance just enough to allow liquid water to potentially exist in its vast seas. This is not Mars, dry and cracked, nor Jupiter, boiling in size and heat, this world is moderate and mild. It may be covered in a global ocean, hidden beneath a thick, insulating hydrogen atmosphere glowing in twilight. This gas shell would shield life from radiation, and keep conditions stable beneath the drifting clouds. James Webb's infrared gaze detected water vapor, and more, a trio of gases essential to Earth's own biology. It spotted methane, a product of decay, and carbon dioxide, an output of respiration, swirling above the planet's blue skin. Together, in a hydrogen-rich place, these form a recipe not for randomness, but for life itself. In 2025, using its MRI instrument, Webb saw something new, dimethyl sulfide, or DMs, within the planetary air. On Earth, this compound is produced by life, especially ocean phytoplankton thriving beneath wave and foam. To detect DMs is like finding a fingerprint, one that points toward biology beneath the planetary cloud layer. And then came dimethyl disulfide, or DMDS, an even more complex chemical dancing with the wind. On Earth, DMDS is linked to microbes, creatures that thrive in watery places, making noise in silence. The fact that both appeared together, in an atmosphere already brimming with water and carbon, has stunned experts. Astrophysicist Niku Madhusudan of Cambridge has said it clearly, this may be a living world in the unseen ocean. This is not imagination, it is verified data, statistically sound and peer-reviewed under starlight. Now, scientists face the possible truth that K218b's oceans could be alive, filled with creatures unseen. If DMs is truly from life, then those seas may house tiny organisms, using faint red light for their survival. These microscopic life forms may drift like plankton, filtering nutrients from the rich depths beneath the glowing clouds. Some go further, suggesting filter-feeding life, ancient analogues to Earth's early multicellular beings swimming in tides. Imagination dares to dream of alien flying fish, evolved in low gravity and high pressure, breaking the waves in leaps. This may not be Earth now, but Earth long ago, around 3 to 4 billion years past, when microbes ruled the ocean. And as those microbes changed Earth's air, perhaps similar transformations stir under K218b's swirling skies. With each new signal, the telescope sees not only chemicals but a biological clock, ticking quietly underwater. Now, 
The big question rises above mountain and mist, should we try to communicate? Some warn us to stay quiet, including physicist Mark Buchanan, who sees danger in opening channels to the unknown. He says shouting into the void could attract beings we cannot understand, risking Earth's safety through cosmic curiosity. Ethical voices like Dr. Anthony Milligan urge caution, fearing disruption not only of us, but of their fragile ecosystems. Others, like AVI Loeb, argue differently, if they're listening, they've already heard our broadcast signals. Still, any message we send would take 120 years to reach that blue horizon, and the reply would take another 120. For now, Earth must wait in quiet orbit, while instruments continue gathering the mysterious signs. What's not in doubt are the molecules, they are present, consistent, and growing in number like echoes in deep caverns. K218b is no longer just an astronomical coordinate, but a focal point for global space efforts under a shared sky. Though no current rocket can reach it in a lifetime, plans are in motion to watch it with greater precision. NASA is now accelerating Louvoir and Hebex, two new telescopes meant to study exoplanet atmospheres in exquisite detail. Europe and China are joining the race, building space observatories meant to peer into the night for signs of life. Beyond watching, there's talk of traveling, a dream driven by laser propulsion and solar sails, still being tested. With hope rising, voices also call for protection, not for Earth, but for K218b's untouched biosphere. International panels, have proposed a category of exobiological sanctuaries, planets to be studied only from afar. Dr. Monica Vidari, an astrobiologist, reminds us that alien life has evolved without US, shaped by time and tide alone. New proposals suggest no-fly zones, limiting probe paths and radiation around these sensitive cosmic cradles. These rules reflect something deeper, that the power to reach doesn't mean the right to touch. Because if those oceans are alive, even in microbial whispers, then they are the first confirmed kin. In recognizing that, we face a choice, observe, respect, or intrude without understanding the stakes. Perhaps the most powerful aspect of K218b isn't alien, it's reflective, a mirror held up to Earth's ancient story. This is a planet possibly filled with waves and mist, much like Earth once was before cities or voices. Watching it is like looking back, seeing the seed of life's beginning sprouting again, far away under an unfamiliar star. It reminds us that life is fragile, rare in conditions but persistent once born. K218b may help scientists unlock secrets about how life starts, how it survives, and maybe how it spreads. To some, this is a pivot point, a time when logic, faith, and curiosity align on a new cosmic reality. Maybe life isn't the exception, but the rule in a quiet, humming universe waiting to be heard. So, we don't just study the planet, we study ourselves in its reflection, in its blue possibilities and cloudy memories. Now, this world is no longer just a number, or a star chart blip, it is a window into what may be possible. K218b is telling the same chemical stories Earth once told, water, methane, carbon, the language of breath and decay. With that whisper, our view of existence shifts, we no longer ask if we're alone, we ask how soon we'll be certain. Because we are near confirmation, near the border between dreaming and knowing beneath the star-filled vault. And while K218b may be the first, it won't be the last, many ocean worlds await in the silence. Each is a chance not only to explore space but to rediscover ourselves through the lens of what else might live. So, we turn to you. Do you believe in the life hidden under K218b's waves? Should Earth speak across the silence, or remain a respectful observer of the alien tides? And if this is the moment we prove we're not alone, what will we become next? 
Some researchers suggest caution, even on a cultural level, our reaction may shape future encounters across the galaxy. Already, Earth's artists, poets, and storytellers are weaving K218B into the collective imagination. In literature, it's a metaphor for hope, for rebirth, for what lies just out of reach beneath the interstellar surface. Teachers now speak of it in classrooms, asking children to imagine a sea under red light, alive with potential. It's becoming not just science, but symbolism, a new chapter in humanity's mythos beneath constellations. Some faith leaders believe it confirms a divine abundance, that life is scattered, not isolated. Others fear disruption of long-held truths, where Earth was once seen as the sole cradle of life. Still, even in conflict, there's engagement, a shared gaze turned skyward toward the unknown world. It reminds us that discovery is more than finding, it's transforming, from idea to impact in every field. In psychology, the discovery fuels a new perspective on human identity within the vast stellar system. In ethics, it redefines what it means to encounter the other, even if that other is a microbe floating in alien waters. In politics, discussions of contact, sovereignty, and responsibility unfold beyond nations into planetary agreements. The UN is already examining frameworks for interstellar governance, balancing curiosity with caution. If life exists there, however simple, then Earth is no longer alone in its life-bearing role. And if we are not alone, we are not superior, we are neighbors, possibly even distant family. That is why the cultural ripple may matter as much as the scientific one, for it shifts our position. From rulers of a lone planet to participants in a shared cosmic ecosystem, silently breathing together across light years. We may one day face the question of rights, do alien microbes have value inherently, regardless of benefit to us? Do their oceans deserve to remain untouched, preserved like a living archive of cosmic beginnings? In protecting them, we may learn how to protect Earth more fully, seeing life's fragility mirrored in another blue sphere. We may find solutions for our climate, medicine, or sustainability by watching how nature flourishes elsewhere. But first, we must listen, we must observe without conquest, without colonial thinking, without disruption. This may be our test, before any signal sent or mission launched, to see if we can be worthy custodians. Some say K218B is a gift, not in technology but in humility, reminding us how rare and lucky we are. A watery orb glimmering quietly, far across the stars, teaching lessons without speaking a single word. A telescope found it, yes, but wonder made it important, a wonder shared through satellites, science, and story. K218B has awakened a new kind of attention, one rooted in reverence, not just exploration. Subscribe to our channel and thanks for watching.